There's a hundred and four days of self-isolation. Outdoor school has come along to save us. We'll still social distance, but with entertainment, there's so much for us to do now. Like maybe just doing Critter, Petra, Fossil, and Bumble, or cleaning up your messy room. Different experiments with potato or wilderness first aid with trillium. Learning things with fruit about animals or measuring stuff with marmot. Fascinating. Learning to plant with lich. Plant facts with morning glory and obviously camp songs too. This rocks. As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff to do. Outdoor school is so much fun. Come on, Boulder. Go stick with us. It's the Creekside staff are Stop for making a title sequence. Hi, I'm Mycelia Merwin. My name might sound familiar to you, and it's probably because you've heard of my cousin, Steve Irwin. What Steve was to the wild and dangerous animals of Australia, I am to the fungi kingdom. I'm taking you on quite the adventure. I've travelled all the way to the Pacific Northwest from Australia. I'm headed to the Rock Creek Environmental Studies Centre today at the Portland Community College Rock Creek campus. I've been here before and by crikey they sure have some amazing mushroom specimens. We're going to see what we can find today and I'm going to teach you some mushroom basics. Out in the wild, mushrooms will grow on anything and everything they can. Dirt, decomposing material and even living trees, insects and plants. This is going to be a great trip and I can't wait to share everything I know about fungi. And I must admit, I'm a pretty fun guy myself. All right, so I've made it here to the environmental center and I'm so excited to get in there and see what kind of fungi I might find. Let's go. Oh, crikey, I've barely made it into the center and I've already found my first fungi. Here we have an amazing shelf fungi. The shelf fungi are fascinating because they grow rings annually, like trees. Unlike trees, the rings don't tell you anything about the growing conditions for that year, but it is super cool to take a look at these fungi and see how long they've been living. And the mycelium of these fungi actually go straight into the back of the tree. So in this tree, it's full of rooting mycelium all over the place. Fascinating. Well, what do you know? I found yet another shelf fungi. I turned around from the last one I found, and this one was sitting right here at the very end of this tree. This one's a little bit bigger, and if you look closely, it looks like there's three rings on the top of this guy. Wow, this is amazing. Unfortunately, the day was quickly coming to an end, so I decided to call it in and head back. It doesn't mean the adventure's over yet, though. It just means it's on pause until tomorrow. It's day two of this great adventure, and I'm back at the Environmental Study Centre to see what more amazing fungi I can find. Oh, crikey! Would you look at that? I've managed to find some beautiful mushrooms out here in the forest. Come in a little bit closer. Now, right here, we've got a beautiful mushroom. I'm just going to pull it out of the ground here real quick, so we can take a nice closer look at the anatomy of this mushroom. Now, starting at the top, we have the cap. The cap tells you a lot about what kind of mushroom you found. This one's got quite a flat cap, but you might find some that have some tall, bell-shaped, or even just curved like a bow. On the bottom of the cap, we have these gills, and this is where the spores live. This is also known as the spore-bearing surface of a mushroom. Now, some mushrooms have gills, and some have sponge-like consistency at the bottom, and spores live in the sponges and are released into the wild through the wind, rain, and anything else that might come along and bother them. Now, if we take a look at this long stem, this is called the stalk of the mushroom, and right here we've got the ring. Now, when the mushrooms are real small, the bottom of the mushroom down here and the top where the ring is are connected, and as it grows, the flesh splits and often leaves behind these little hanging flesh. Now, down at the bottom, you'll usually get the same thing, and that's called the vulva. Now, at the very bottom here, we have these little roots that are coming off of the mushroom, and this is called the mycelium. Each individual strand is the hyphae, and together they make the cell body known as the mycelium. The organism itself is actually the mycelium, and underneath us right now are probably thousands and thousands of strands of hyphae connected to make mycelium. All of these mushrooms are just the fruiting body. The actual fungi is that mycelium underneath the ground. 
Isn't that just wild and fascinating? Now, as we look here, we'll see more and more clusters of these mushrooms popping out of the ground. Look at how many there are. Isn't that just amazing? What a beautiful sight to see. Now, what's really fascinating is that all of these mushrooms that you're seeing are probably all connected to the same mycelium. They're all the exact same living organism. Just different hundreds probably of different fruiting bodies coming out of the ground. And the sole purpose is to disperse spores and grow the mycelium even bigger than it already is. Let's keep moving and see what else we can find. We found some more clusters of mushrooms here and these ones look a little bit different than what we were seeing earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and pull one out so we can take a look at it. Now when you pull a mushroom out of the ground, you're just pulling the fruiting body out of the ground. You're usually not actually harming the mycelium, the actual living organism. But you want to be careful though. Here we've got a lot of clusters of mushrooms, so we're okay to maybe pull one or two. But if you just see one lone mushroom, it's best to leave it so that that organism can repopulate. Now, if we take a look at the bottom here, you can see some of the strands of mycelium. They're kind of hard to see because when you pull them up out of the ground, they usually disappear. But if you get in real close here, come in real close, you can see all these little strands living in the bark chips. That's all the mycelium. Now, fun fact about the mycelium, it doesn't actually digest its food, it absorbs it. Isn't that just amazing? What a beautiful mushroom. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of this cap, you can actually see the spore bearing surface. That's because the cap hasn't opened up completely. Most likely it'll open up flat like these mushrooms right down here. But for right now, the young ones are still in balls. Once the spores are ready to be dispersed, the mushroom cap will open up and the spores will be released and blown around in the wind. Isn't it just amazing? All right, now, I found some more mushroom specimens that might be interesting to look at. We've got to be careful. It's full of thistle in here. Now, if you get down here real close, you can see that all of these mushroom caps are starting to split up and turn brown. And that's because these mushrooms have probably dispersed all of the spores that they were growing inside the caps. Once the, the spores are dispersed into the wild, the mushroom can actually die off. And that's because it's done its purpose. There's no use for the mushroom after that. It's just the fruiting body. Let's keep moving. Wow, I just keep finding them today. Come in a little bit closer. Now, if we take a look at these mushrooms in the back here, we can see what they look like before they've dispersed all of their spores. Now, down here in the bottom, we've got some very little ones. And you can see how their cap is closer and more rounded. And these caps are a little bit more bill-shaped, but they're relatively flat. Now, if we take a look at these ones over here, you can see that the caps have confli completely flipped around, like your umbrella does in the wind sometimes. And that's probably because these mushrooms have dispersed all of their spores. Not all mushrooms will turn around like this after dispersing the spores, but some do, like these ones. <laughs> Isn't it a beaut? All right, so I've managed to find some real little ones in here. Mushrooms can shape in all different sizes and colors. And these ones have a little bit more of a domed cap. Now we've seen some flat caps and now we're taking a look at a nice dome cap. Mushrooms are 90% water. So taking a look at these ones, you're looking at mostly water. Isn't that just fascinating? What beauts these are too. Look at that. So cute. Let's keep moving. There are three types of relationships a fungi can have with another living organism. The first relationship is a mycorrhiza relationship. This is a symbiotic relationship between the fungi and another living organism. The fungi will usually live in or on the organism, usually plants, and there's an exchange of nutrients between the two in order to both stay alive. The second type of relationship is a saprophyte relationship. This is when you have fungi growing an already dead, decaying organic material. This is the most common place you will find fungi. The last relationship is a parasitic one. This is when the fungi acts as a parasite in an already living organism. The parasite will steal nutrients from the living organism that it would otherwise have needed to survive.
Right now, when you're looking for mushrooms out in the wild, a really good place to look for them is in damp, dark, cool climates. That's where all the decomposing material is. So that's where all your mushrooms are gonna be. If we take a look right here, you can see a very tiny little orange mushroom. Isn't she just a cutie? Now, a lot of mushrooms will grow anywhere and everywhere. You walk out your front door of your house and there might be a mushroom right there in the grass. But out in the wild, out in these woods here, they like the colder, damper climates. Mushrooms that aren't parasitic like to eat and feed on decomposing material. And that's where the decomposing material is. So that's where they're gonna be. Right, now, there are three main types of mushroom caps and we've seen two of them today. One is that sort of bell-shaped cap. It's usually pretty long and curved. Another one is usually shaped much like the ones we've been seeing back out here. They're relatively flat caps. And the last one is more of a bowl shape. That's those tiny ones that we saw out there. They're shaped pretty circular, like a moon, like a half moon. Now there are many other different types of mushroom caps. The types are endless because the species of mushrooms are endless. But those are the three main types of caps that you might see out in the world. Let's keep moving, see if we can find anything else interesting. Right, it looks like there are some right in here. Now look, take a look at these mushrooms. Now these are pretty similar to all the ones we've been seeing today, but they are just cuties, aren't they? Look at the little baby ones down in here. Aren't these just beautiful mushrooms? Mushrooms are so amazing, and these ones are quite cute. And these kind of look like s'mores. <laughs> in here and take a look at what I just found. Down in here we have some shaggy mane mushrooms. You can see down here in this mushroom that these have a bell-shaped curve around the whole stem. Now if you look at this one up here it's the same mushroom it's just a little bit bigger and the cap is completely flat and curved around and turned black now. These mushrooms start off in a bell-shaped curve style cap. And once the spores have completely developed and are ready to disperse, the mushroom actually digests itself and turns into a black ink. And that's because the spores aren't exposed to any of the natural elements. They can't get out of the cap because of the way the cap's shaped. So the cap self-digests so that the spores can be dispersed. Isn't that absolutely amazing? All right, friends. So I hope you managed to learn some really fascinating things about mushrooms today. That's not all I have to teach you. I've got so much time left on this amazing trip out here in the Pacific Northwest and I still have so many things to teach you. So make sure you keep checking in for my next episodes as they come out. And with that, that's all I've got for you today, friends. I'll see you later.